the carnival, which is our climax, is huge. It's bananas. There's a lot of pieces. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on at that carnival. We have five locked off cameras for this stunt. I'm used to doing things smaller and being like, okay, what's the sort of low budget, nifty solution to doing this? But one of the producers told me like, I don't usually say this, but you should go big. <laughs> Fully locked up, everybody, here we go. Pictures up. So yeah, we went kind of big. Okay, so we're set, we're set, we're set, we're set. All right, and action. Too big because there's like okay maybe maybe scale it back a little bit. Throw them down, yeah. throw them down, and throw then them I make down. a really cool landing. That's yeah. the shot we're doing now. Right. Yeah. So you land, and you're like, let's try that let's try again. that again. And then I start walking. I look over at Freddie like, huh? and he's like, no. oh come on, really? Yeah. And then he's like, look out. There's a tremendous amount of action that takes place within that carnival set. So it was really important having a guy like Kyle with whom we had just worked on Aquaman, to be there to create these amazing action set pieces and to prepare the actors for the action that they were going to do and the stunts that they were going to do. <laughs> yeah, I think the carnival set's been nothing but a challenge. All right, let's take it up and we're going to shoot one. Everyone realized we needed something a little bit bigger than the original script intended, and that grew and grew. It literally doubled our wire work. Guys, I'm a superhero. Come on. We went from about 48 sort of wire gags throughout the film, and we suddenly developed 60 just at the carnival alone. Or try that again! Three, two, one, roll! Mark and Zach did the whole aerial battle in a controlled environment on soundstage. One thing I learned is that the more spectacular something is on screen, the more boring it probably was to shoot. You know, like people flying, you know, they have to be rigged into these weird contraptions, and you have to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> it pays off in the end. Oh, dear me. It's just a challenge to get there. In order to do mid-air fighting, they've developed this thing called a tuning fork, but it means you can rock backwards and forwards, side to side. You can barrel roll as well. Mark picks up choreography really quick. Well done, guys. I felt like my flipping was really nice. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Zach's the same. So when you have two committed actors like that, it's fantastic. Let's roll cameras, please. Here we go, guys. Chan Griffin, my fight choreographer, and his guys, they've really stepped up. Chan, we can do it just this side, right? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. A lot of our guys have had to wear suits and big foam packs that wardrobe department on this made for us just to give us a sense of area and space. And so kill the little girl. Yeah, yeah you're trying to fight back and, and twist your head around, because he's like, ugh. A big challenge was the sins. On the day, we had stunt guys in these weird suits holding on to them. But whenever sins interact with people, we had to basically make digi doubles of their bodies. Because just to make someone look like they're actually grabbing someone, you have to replace almost everything. I had this idea of Shazam flying towards a sin, but the sin turns to smoke, so he just goes straight through, and then the sin grabs him and throws him. You know, right from the start, I was like, oh, yes, that's something that I want to do. There's a pantomime version of Zack inside the tuning fork rig being puppeteered by the stunt guys going through all of those motions so that we can capture his physical performance as well as his facial performance. And then we marry that up with a CG creature. This show is tricky because you had a seven sin, so you have a lot of different creatures. We have a four-armed creature. So basically, it's two of my guys, you know, and one fighting behind the other. So it works really well. But uh, it was fun watching him deal with, you know, two pool noodles, two real hands, you know, one guy at the back, people spinning, and, you know, always leads to a bit of comedy relief. <laughs> Hi there. What's up? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Ready for this? Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun, eh? The kids have been fantastic. We've had them on wires. They've up for anything. Harness feels comfy. <laughs> awesome. We had Dala and Eugene being picked up. Let's just take him up, give him a little hang test so he can feel his harness going up. Yep, that's high enough. How's that feel? Good. Feel like yeah. the other day? Yeah. And they did a fantastic job. They really did. Action. Thank you. 
and it's exciting. You see their smiles on the faces when they come down. Yay! I love it. You know, I have a seven-year-old boy at home, and, and I know he'd love to do that sort of stuff as well. Super! It's the most fun thing in the world <laughs> that I've done. Walking from over here, heading over to uh, where Ralph is. Yeah. But when you're at this point, you hear Freddy say a thing about he's figuring out that, it, that the eye is the power. You stop, turn to the kids, and say, like, gather the mugs. Yeah. And then after that, it's when the sins come out. Scared? You will be. When you come to work and you've got sets like this, don't have to use your imagination in, in a film in which you know there is a lot of blue screen and CGI these kind of movies involve a lot of that it's wonderful to have sets that do the work for you it's been you know amazing we rented all the rides but then all the huts that are blown up are all made by us it is pretty incredible how much of a legitimate carnival that they've built in this big open lot. We literally blew up a Ferris wheel, guys. So it was cool. an actual Ferris so wheel, cool. and they just dropped it on its side. <laughs> it was insane. Part of the end climax of the movie is the Ferris wheel coming down. When we first showed up, everyone said, okay, we're gonna drop a Ferris wheel on this, and don't worry, we'll do a visual effects. And I was like, no, you won't. <laughs> because <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I, I do these big movies for. We bought a Ferris wheel from an old amusement park. We took all those parts and brought them back here, and we essentially re-engineered 80% of it. It's a Ferris wheel, which seems like something that's in every amusement park, but it's supported from one side, and then it needed to be safe enough to have it operate as fast as a Ferris wheel will go, and then tip to 30 degrees with people in it. Oh my gosh, those people! We had to measure out where this thing was going to fall and, and then put some marks on the ground so that we knew where the where the wheel was going to come to. And the cameras are all getting set to a cone you put on the ground. It's pretty stressful. <laughs> Trying to get a thing like that that's 60 feet tall that is hinged on a pivot that actually releases halfway down. And then it starts pivoting from another axis and whether or not it's going to bounce a little bit or whether it's just going to stop where it is. Trying to figure out exactly where that's going to be it was pretty fun. Action. We're actually pretty happy with the spot we picked because it landed uh, probably about three inches from where we thought it was going to land in the first place. Even though we did all these big things, you know, destroy a big Ferris wheel, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. The best part of making the carnival was just those emotional scenes because it's all about the performance. And action. Shit. Shazam! I think you can do that one more time. Yeah. But when once your head comes up, you can take a second or so to just <gasps> to catch your breath and then say Shazam. Okay. Just catch your oh, that, that, yeah, that's awesome. We'll do that. Okay? Something that seems simple, like Savannah pushing Billy's head into the ice water. That was an extremely difficult stunt. You okay, yeah? Yep. Yep. We're good. And, you know, Asher did such a great job. Shazam! The carnival was millions of times bigger than anything I've done before. It's extremely complicated because myself and David we had frame by frame on huge boards, not one, not two, 10, 15 boards of what we have to follow. So this is the only way to keep track, shot by shot. But light-wise, fantastic, full of colors. Then when the family becomes the Shazam family, yeah! You have superheroes flying everywhere, up and down. Yes! Blue is my favorite color, and I can fly. <laughs> the whole film, we've sort of seen him fumble and try to understand what he's capable of and, and harness that power. If a superhero can't save his family, he's not much of a hero. And we get to a point now where he finally understands his powers, and he's finally got control of them. Shazam! All right, this is it. Mano a mano. Away we go.